Hi, I'm starting a science program at Durham College next semester. I've been told I need to learn more about academic integrity, and I have some questions. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm the Writing Specialist at Student Academic Learning Services, also known as SALS. Academic integrity is a serious academic concern. I'd be happy to tell you about what academic integrity means, discuss Durham College's academic integrity policy, talk about ways to maintain academic integrity, discuss your responsibilities as a student, and also give you some information on where you can get help if you need it. Great. So what does academic integrity mean? Academic integrity is academic honesty. And Durham College has an academic integrity policy, which can be found at the website. And the policy defines academic integrity as the pursuit of scholarly activity in an open, honest, and responsible manner. So academic integrity is about honesty. I have a question. I'm going into a science program. If I do a lab experiment with a partner, am I supposed to write the report on my own or can I work with a partner to write the lab report? It really depends on your professor's instructions. If your professor says to do the experiment with your partner and work together to write one lab report, you're expected to share the work and collaborate. If, however, your professor says to do the experiment together but to work individually to write individual lab reports, you're not to share or collaborate. If you do share information or collaborate without permission, it's considered academically dishonest. If you're not sure about what you're being asked to do, be sure to ask your professor. What other types of academic dishonesty are there besides collaborating without permission? Other types of academic dishonesty include copying someone else's work, using unauthorized material during a test or an examination, submitting the same work in more than one course without faculty authorization, and plagiarizing someone else's work. I didn't know there were so many types. Why is academic integrity such a big concern? Well, if you're academically dishonest, it's a form of cheating or stealing, and this can have a negative impact on your reputation and the reputation of Durham College. When you're at school or at work, people need to know that you're honest and that you achieve the diploma or certificate with your name on it through good, honest work. Okay, so if I was given an assignment for a class, is it alright to use part or even the whole assignment for another class? After all, it is my work. No, you're not allowed to submit the same work in more than one course without faculty permission. You already received a grade for that particular assignment and you can't be evaluated for the same work again. If you're not sure about what you can and can't do, be sure to ask your professor. Okay, I'll definitely ask my professor if I'm not sure. So, what can happen if a student is academically dishonest? For alleged acts of academic dishonesty, your professor may initiate what's called an academic alert form. He or she will ask to meet with you to discuss the situation and may bring the matter to the associate dean or the dean. If you're found to be in breach of the academic integrity policy, the consequences can range from a zero on that particular test, assignment, or exam, zero in the course, or removal from your program. Nobody wants this to happen, so be sure you speak with your professor if you have questions or concerns. Well, I definitely don't want to fail, so I want to make sure that I've got this straight. What can you tell me about plagiarism? Plagiarism is the unacknowledged use of another author's words or ideas. As a college student, you are expected to research and use other people's words and ideas to write your paper or prepare your presentation. But if you do use someone else's words or ideas, you must reference their work. There are five times when you must reference. I think you should write this down. Okay, so the first time you have to reference is when you quote. And when you quote, you're copying something word for word and you're going to use quotation marks along with the reference. The second time you need to reference is when you paraphrase, and that's when you take someone else's words and reword it in your own words. The third time is when you summarize, and that's when you reword just the main ideas of someone else's ideas. The fourth time is when you include statistics, and finally you need to reference when you use images or graphics. Hmm, that sounds confusing. How can I avoid plagiarism? 
Well, referencing isn't all that confusing, as long as you keep track of your research and reference as you write. You're going to avoid plagiarism by referencing in two places. One of them is what's called an in-text citation, and that goes in brackets immediately beside a piece of information that is not your idea. As well, you're going to put a reference at the end of your document on a separate page called a references or works cited page. So what about if I reword a sentence or two from the original source? Do I still need to reference that? Yes, you do. When you reword something, you're paraphrasing. That original idea doesn't belong to you, so you must acknowledge the author both in text and on the references or works cited page. Keep in mind, though, you're not going to use quotation marks if you do reword something because you change the wording. Only use quotation marks when the words are exactly the same. What reference style will I have to use? APA and MLA are the two most common referencing styles used at Durham College. Your professor will tell you which style you're expected to use. The Durham College Library has guides for using APA and MLA and you can get help with referencing at cells. So if referencing isn't that hard, why do students plagiarize? Well, plagiarism can occur oftentimes because students haven't allowed themselves enough time to complete the assignment properly. They may have procrastinated or delayed in getting started. They may be juggling a lot of other assignments and decide that in order to get the assignment done, they're going to take a shortcut by copying information from a website or from another student, for instance. Another reason plagiarism may occur is that they may be feeling pressure to do well on the assignment. Perhaps the student isn't doing as well in the course as they would like, and so again, they may try to take a shortcut to get the work done. When students share too much information with each other, both students can get into trouble. Also, plagiarism may occur when students don't keep track of their research, and finally, plagiarism occurs when students don't really understand the rules for referencing. Just remember though, help is available. How do students get caught for plagiarism? Plagiarism can be detected in one of two ways. The first way is with your professor's experience. They understand your writer's voice and your writer's voice is the way you typically write. When your writing is different, or if your voice is not coming through in the same way it normally does, your professor may be concerned that plagiarism has occurred. Another way plagiarism is detected is through the use of plagiarism detection software. Durham College has a license to turnitin.com, and turnitin.com is a massive database that compares your work, the work that you submit, to other student papers, books, articles, and billions of pages of internet content. The bottom line is, it doesn't really matter if plagiarism is intentional or unintentional. It can have very serious consequences. I really don't want any problems with plagiarism at college. What would you say are the best ways to avoid plagiarism? Well, first of all, a way to avoid plagiarism is to remember the five times when you must reference. Those are the things you wrote down. I'll go through them again. Remember that you have to reference when you're quoting when you're paraphrasing, summarizing, including statistics, and including images. Also, you need to allow enough time to do your work properly. Be sure to allow enough time to ask your professor questions if you have any. Be sure to document your research on a research notes forum. This is where you'll indicate where you found the information, the information itself, and your plan for using it. Another way to avoid plagiarism is to make sure you learn how to quote, paraphrase, summarize, and reference correctly. Okay, great. How can I get help if I need it? If you have questions or concerns about academic integrity or the academic expectations at Durham College, be sure to speak with your professor or your student advisor, consult your student handbook or your program guide, or speak with the staff at SALS. You can call us, or email us, or visit us, and you can find out more information at the website. Great, thanks. I've learned a lot. I'm glad. Good luck with your studies. I hope you have a successful semester.